Let's get straight to it. Today, I'll remove all the confusion in the latest patch. I'll break down what these new sensitivity settings do and how the new aim assist works. I'll also show how you can get your old settings and old aim assist again, and the gear I use in my setup. You'll want to take a screenshot of your old settings before you change things, just so you can go back to them if something feels off. In true Fortnite fashion, they completely change your settings when you log in, and change the name of just about every single setting. It's all broken down into four sections. Basic Sense, Advanced Look Sense, Advanced ADS Sense, and Advanced Sense. To get your old sensitivity back with old aim assist, turn on Advanced Options, scroll down to the bottom, and turn on Use Legacy Look Controls. Simple as that. If you want the same sensitivity, but with new options and new aim assist, click Copy from Legacy, and it'll transfer its best estimate of your settings. The basic section is just your general settings. Your legacy XY sense is now called look sensitivity, which is just how fast you turn left and right or look up and down. Your ADS sense is how fast you can aim different directions when you're aiming in your rifles, shotguns, etc. I don't like this, but for some reason they got rid of scope sensitivity, which means your snipers will always have the same sense as your other guns. Build multiplier is a simplified way to bump up your building sensitivity. Their adjustment felt a little fast for me, so I dropped my build sense down 0 0.10. Whatever you have your look sense at, you can boost anywhere from 0.1 to 5 times. Now, if you want to be the fastest builder and controller, go for max crank with a 100% look sense and a 5 times multiplier. This way, you can build 50 times faster than everyone else. Editing sense is the same thing just for your editing. This next setting is a big change that can help you have better aim in the long run, but is going to depend on how much work you want to put into it. At the bottom of advanced settings, you'll see look input curve. The main two ways of aiming are exponential, which Fortnite usually has, and linear. Exponential means that when you deflect your thumbstick to aim, it starts off slow and exponentially gets faster as you hold down the same direction. It's like if your car stuck in the mud and you're trying to gun it, it'll be slow at first, grind through, then accelerate really quick when you're free. So if you want to make a flick shot, you need to know exactly how fast your aim is accelerating and time it up perfectly. Linear means your aim speeds up at a set rate, which makes everything very consistent in the long term and helps the most with developing muscle memory. Now, I think my aim is better on Overwatch, where I've used a linear curve since I started playing a few months ago. My problem with Fortnite is I've played something like 12 to 15,000 matches, and I have the muscle memory of Exponential down already. So I recommend sticking with Exponential if you're an experienced player, unless you want to dedicate some serious time to be more consistent in the long run. Back up top, turning boost is a new option that I see as an addition to the exponential curve. It's pretty much aim acceleration because it adds extra speed to your aim when you deflect your stick all the way to the edge. So you aim normally if you make small precise movements, but if you move your thumbstick all the way to the side, your aim accelerates and kicks up the aim speed. The biggest use for this is going to be if you are on a low sensitivity and you feel like it takes forever to shoot enemies behind you, like you have poor reaction time. Turning it on, you'll still get to keep your normal short movements, but you'll actually be able to turn around and react to getting shot in the back or to enemies a far screen distance away from you. So if you feel like you have a tough time shooting enemies behind you, I recommend trying the boost at 25% and bumping it up as high as 60%. But again, it's unnecessary and should only be used if you feel comfortable with that extra boost. The more variables you add into your aim, the harder it is to stay consistent. I use a fast sense that I'm comfortable with. When I tried the new settings, I put this at 0%. I think aim acceleration is typically bad for accuracy, and it's what Legacy Aim had, so I'd recommend this at 0% or as low as possible. I know this is a lot, so at the end of the video, I'll give a summary of all my recommended settings. Along with the boost, there's also the ramp time. This is how long you need your stick to be all the way to the edge in order for the boost to kick in. So with zero seconds, you'll boost as soon as you hit the edge of the stick. And with one second, you'll need your stick at the edge for a full second before it speeds up, which would be pretty useless. If you put on turning boost, then you'll want to keep the boost ramp time at 0.2 or 0.25, but you can do anything from zero to 0.4 seconds. If you do decide to go with linear aim, I'd recommend having this low or off completely. You'll need to be very precise with this because it'll follow your every move. Just remember that a lower number means you have to be more in control with your aim, but you'll have more immediate reactions. 
The next section is the exact same thing, just for when you're aiming down sights. On legacy settings, I play on a .725 XY and a .55 ADS, which turn into a 50% and 61% look sense with a 27-33% ADS. If you're like me and you played on an even XY before, your X will be one number and Y will be 11% higher than that. This is really for newer players because Fortnite felt like their diagonal movement wasn't very accurate. So if you set it to even on the newer settings, you'll notice that your diagonal aim is more like a box instead of like a rectangle. If we scroll down a little bit, the look dampening time is basically another dead zone setting and it's the exact opposite of the look boost. This is really just how much slower your aim takes to get moving, like a small pause or hesitation when you first start deflecting your stick. It's best to have this at a zero since your aim will just be one flat consistent sensitivity, which again is the best way to train muscle memory. So you can drop it to zero if you want. Like I said earlier, I've played this game a lot, so I'm staying with what I was used to. Fortnite has always had this at a point two, along with other games like Call of Duty. So if you're gonna stick with Fortnite, you can set it to zero, but anything up to point three will be fine. The other setting you may have forgotten about is your dead zone setting next to your button binds. Dead zone is how much you have to move your thumbstick for something to happen. So you see how I bump up dead zone and this blue circle gets bigger? That's how much my thumbstick has to move before I aim anywhere. If it's this low, I barely have to move my stick and I'll look right away, which gives you more raw control and reactions. If you're on Xbox, the default for this was a 0 .20, which is insane and you need to lower to at least a 0.15 immediately. PS4 players have the default at a 0.12, which I think is pretty good. I lowered mine because it feels like my aim is more immediate, there's not really a lag to it. All this means is that I have to be a little more precise. If you have a worn down controller and a low dead zone though, you'll get stick drift. But if you have a high dead zone, you'll aim more blocky, like in straight lines instead of at precise angles. So this is a personal preference, but 0 .10 felt good for me. Anything from a 0.10 to a 0 .15 is good. Anything higher is cool if you have stick drift or if you just prefer it. Before I talk about the aim assist changes, I want to show you why I'm able to make my settings the way I do. You guys know I use a controller with extra paddles on the bottom, and in the last 4 months I swapped over to Evil Controllers who sponsored this video. I wanted a controller from a company that actually gave a shit about its users and that focused on quality over quantity, like I try to do with my videos. I've talked to Evil Controllers owner Adam a lot, and I can't tell you guys how much he cares about his controllers. He personally works on most of them and is always looking for ways to improve them, which is why he's giving $20 off to anyone that uses my link in the description and code DREC20 at checkout. You can customize these almost any way you want for PS4 and Xbox. You can have paddles and buttons underneath, you can add evil sticks, which are really comfortable thumbstick extenders that help control your aim more than anything else. One of my favorite features is the tactile button set, which makes your face buttons, d-pad, or triggers click faster, and I think adds vital seconds to my shots. You can also choose to add extra thumbstick tension to give yourself extra control of your aim and have your controller modded, which is an insane way to get an advantage in Fortnite, COD, Overwatch, whatever. I don't personally use them, but I've tried them out and they are absolutely insane. The master mod gives you full-on custom rapid fire, drop shot, quicker reloads, tons of stuff. You can find all those details with the link below. Plus, you can add some sick color options like the two I have. If you want to take your Fortnite and gaming in general to the next level, I cannot recommend buying one of these enough. I feel like I'm almost twice as good from just using paddles and I can't go back to a normal controller. Evil also backs up their quality by giving you 14 days to try it out for free. 14 days for free. And they have a crazy one year warranty when every other company gives 30 days. If you want to buy one, you need to use the link in the description, then use code DREC20 for $20 off at checkout. Also, if you check it out, you don't know what to choose, feel free to DM me on Twitter or email me and I'll give you personal recommendations. Now let's finish by talking about the difference between old and new aim assist and why you choose one or the other. With both of them, aim assist only works when you're actively moving your stick. It will move up and down with jumping enemies and it doesn't work when an enemy is too far from you. On new aim assist, you'll notice your crosshair turns red anytime you look near someone with effective range, which is just any range before damage drop off starts. The new one emphasizes tracking and completely removes L2 snapping. It also keeps track of multiple enemies, so it can do a better job of staying on the target you originally focused on and wanted to shoot instead of your aim getting dragged away on players, running past, or a downed enemy. 
At long ranges, there's not much of a difference. I'd actually say it's a little worse on the new one because any strength it adds at mid to long range is minimal and you can't L2 snap. Hip firing at mid range, you won't see a change from the old settings. At close ranges is where you'll notice it the most. The new aim assist is really strong hip firing. A shotgun can completely turn you towards the other player. Like right here, I'm doing nothing but running back and forth and I'm getting bent back to this guy. It's also super noticeable when an enemy jumps, like it's actually insane how much it follows the other player for you. But as helpful as all that is, I actually prefer the older aim assist because it allows you to be more mobile and avoid shots without getting stuck on the other player. With the old legacy settings, you can also L2 snap at all ranges. There's also a difference in the aim assist window. The aim assist window is pretty much how big of an area where your aim assist takes effect. So with the old legacy settings, there's a larger area where aim assist will start to activate. We can see this since my aim slows down from pretty far away here. On the new settings, I can go past him and only slow down close to him, which means a smaller window. There is a big distinction between aim assist on console and aim assist on PC, especially with the new settings. With controller players on PC, it seems the new aim assist helps your tracking longer ranges more than the little bit it helps on console though they're supposedly the same aim assist. It could just be the players are better. I played with both settings back and forth all day the last two days, and the legacy aim assist just feels better on console. I like the stupid L2 snapping, I think it's better for box fighting because you can be more mobile. Any small tracking buff they added just isn't enough. The reason you would switch to the new mode is if you want to swap to linear ramp to be more consistent in the long run, or play on a low sensitivity and want to bump up your boost. So overall, I'd recommend turning on old legacy controls and just sticking with that. If you're on a low sense and you want faster aim for players behind you, put your boost on 18% and your ramp time at 0.2. Then I'd put 0 or 0.1 for your look dampening. If you want to try linear out, completely turn off both boosts and look dampening. At that point, you'll probably want to lower your overall sensitivity 5-10%. to 10 In the comments, let me know what your settings are, or if you found some that you like. And if you enjoyed the vid, make sure to subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.